you just ask us what you want a little bit. Yeah. Um, kia ora everybody, Sophie Hoskins here, the Eons Kayarahi, and um, we're really lucky to have um, Vicky back with us, who is going to share um, a bit about the journey so far of the new Climate Action Campus uh, down in Ōtautahi. Hi Vicky. Hi. <laughs> uh, thanks for um, joining me today. Um, so uh, it's really exciting to hear what's happening down there, and I don't know much about it. Uh, yet, and I'm not sure how many other people do, but um, would would you start with just um, telling us a little bit about yourself, and then um, what what how you've got into this? <laughs> um, so my background's in politics, actually, um, and all sorts of things, politics and business, and all sorts of things. So I'm not an educationalist or anything like um, uh, remotely involved with teaching or anything. Uh, I was involved in uh, setting up both Discovery One and Unlimited, which has now become our Tafati Unlimited Discovery. Um, mainly, I have to say, because um, my own son hated school <laughs> with a passion. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I certainly didn't want to homeschool. <laughs> so I discovered that you could actually set up special character schools. And I thought it would take mm, six or 10 weeks. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm an eternal optimist. Um, so it took uh, uh, at least three years because um, they hadn't really been done before. Um, but we finally got consent for Discovery, which was the primary school, Discovery One, and then just in time for him to leave primary school <laughs> to go to high school. So we had to do the secondary school pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so they've been uh, merged and they've been going for oh, 20 something years. Um, have a huge wait list um, and yeah, offer a style of education that is about the interest of the child rather than sit down, we'll tell you what you need to know <laughs> because yep. we don't know. <laughs> um, and it's about retaining their excitement and curiosity and their love of learning basically okay. and by learning around whatever excites them. Yeah, and a really cool school that I was lucky enough to visit once. So <laughs> love to check it out again. So it's quite the, yeah. Quite, yeah, it is. It's very yeah, it's and, now merged. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. But still in town. Still yep. in the central town. Yep. yep. Oh, cool. And um, could you tell us a bit about the uh, Climate Action Campus? Like, what is it and how did it come about? So a couple of um, things. So I, uh, I've been involved in the council here. So I was mayor for some years. And then I went back on the council because I was a bit annoyed about what was happening post-earthquake. And while we were doing the, um, the climate change submissions, we had on when the city would become carbon neutral, how we would become carbon neutral, all of those things. We had a lot, of, we did it in quite a relaxed way. So we just sat around a table, but we had a lot of eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds telling us basically um, from, a, from a real place of uh, climate angst that their future had been stolen um, and what was the point of anything now, um, which was actually quite disconcerting to hear mm. from very young people. And I totally understand that sense of, well, you've ruined the future because the <laughs> I can totally see the reality of that. Um, but uh, I was then meeting with the people who had um, actually set up uh, Discovery One and Unlimited now, our Tafti. And, uh, and we were talking about setting up another one um, around climate action. Uh, so we thought, well, let's just go and ask. Because <laughs> you yeah. don't get anywhere without asking. So yeah. while I was in a meeting, I sent an email to the minister, as you do, because <laughs> you can in New Zealand. Good on, yeah. Uh, and one of his staff replied saying, we'll have a look at um, this school, but it was a private school. Um, and I uh, don't like the idea that some people are excluded from things because of the cost of education. Yeah. So I, I can't sit easily with that. Um, but then met with the woman who heads the Ministry of Education here in Christchurch, Coral Ann Childs, who was actually amazing, um, really, really cool. So she said, well, you won't get away with another special character school within Christchurch because the population's not growing fast enough. You'd have to go into um, the Waimakariri or so on. Well, I wasn't keen on that. <laughs> <laughs> but have you thought about a satellite school? So um, so we got into how do you do a satellite school? I had no clue how you do a satellite school. Um, I've never got any idea of how you do any of these things. 
<laughs> so it's very much a learn as you go <laughs> experience. Um, but uh, so you find a host school and then what they wanted to do was look at cooperation amongst a range of schools so that the students could work together on what is a massive um, issue, like the massive issue of their time, yeah. um, and that teachers could also work together so that not every school had to invent the solution to climate action and yeah. to solve climate change on their own, which was quite a big ask. Mm. Um, so to speak. <laughs> so I went round a range of schools and asked, would they like to be involved? And most of them said yes, uh, particularly the girls' schools. Um, so Avonside and Girls High were great. Our Tafferty, which is Unlimited and Discovery now merged, uh, were excellent and said that they would be the host school, which is great because it enabled us to do primary and secondary. So we ended up with eight schools to start with. And I think others will join. We've already had interest from others um, wow. since then. So there's um, Atafti, of course, um, Hadley Community College, who are great, Evenside uh, Girls, Christchurch Girls, Shirley Boys, um, and then three primaries, um, Rafferty, um, White Kerry, and uh, Banks Ave Primary, which tend to be in the Eastern Centre, because when we'd spoken with the ministry, um, I mean, Christchurch is in quite an unusual situation because there's been a lot of rebuild of schools mm. so we have a lot of so Avonside Girls High building Avonside's a new new building is being occupied by Linwood College who are going into their new nice new building in term two next year but the old uh, site sits right on the Avon River uh, right next to what's called the red zone in Christchurch which is all the land that was bought by the government post the earthquake and which is now kind of been renatured as it were so nature has sort of taken taken back control and it's just incredibly beautiful I mean from a awful awful tragedy came this yep. beautiful thing yeah. uh, so it's right on the Avon River gorgeous um, uh, mostly prefabs uh, but they look pretty gorgeous to us um, and then we've also leased a hectare and a half so four and a half acres of land just right adjacent to the school, so it will join up right on the on, of the red zone, which you can do at the moment in Christchurch. So we've got a big chunk of land, and some buildings come uh, term two. We've got the land already, so we're in the process of setting up various things like greenhouses and um, gardens. And uh, at the, this morning, um, major major what they've called mud kitchen, um, made massive sand pit that. It's all now, it's completely wet with uh, the artesian water and things. So, <laughs> so all sorts of things. And we're planting natives and an orchard and lots of edibles um, and all sorts of things and basically developing it in advance of the, of the building. Sorry, wow. that was a long answer. <laughs> no, that sounds amazing. Um, so by we, um, is that there's a group of you, like the students aren't involved yet? Or? Uh, so the students, the students have been there this morning. So the students oh. from our Tafferty, uh, at yeah. the moment about 110, 120 of them come every Friday. Um, yeah. And so they're very involved. And I suspect next year they'll come a couple of days and then there'll be, there'll be a number of them there full time. Wow. Um, so the students from the other schools can be there like they obviously remain enrolled in their own school, so there's no cost to the other schools. Yep. Um, they, when they come to the school, to the campus, they bring their teachers. So the teachers get the chance to work together as well. Yep. Um, so, but it'll be, they'll be there. They could be there a Tuesday afternoon. They could be there a, a week at a time, a term at a time. Some kids might want to be there full time, um, whatever. Um, the, the schools provide for their for their own students for teaching and our Tafti will provide a director on site and an administration person on site um, and I'm just sort of helping set it up so I'm just doing this as a volunteer at the moment um, although it's wow. just about full time. I was going to say it must be full time. You're amazing. You have to go and raise the money to do this stuff as well because working with schools they just never have any money. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, so the kids will be there with students and they can do anything they want to 
around climate action. So it might be technology, it might be music, it might be um, food, it might be cooking something, they might want to make some new dish. And some of the schools have got commercial kitchens and some of the businesses in town have got um, systems where you can just buy a shelf. So some of the new businesses like Riverside and things have been really cool about um, how they could help like in terms of if you want to create your own social enterprise or your own small business or whatever so the kids um and then obviously we'd like to involve the university the two universities that we have in Christchurch um and the poly and the ARA as well um because they have such amazing sort of degrees degree courses and the university has um, the College of Education it has um, business sustainability within the business school. It has all sorts of things um, and has some great people there as well. Um, and Lincoln has a whole different environmental um, set. But then we had um, the biological husbandry unit who offer organics courses with SIT. They all came out to the site. All the students came out and taught the kids composting uh, wow. for the day by actually building composting um That's building amazing. a massive compost heap which is much much smaller now a week later <laughs> yeah so quite fascinating to watch the process actually because we yeah we just leave it yeah <laughs> and it turns yeah. into soil it's great yeah yeah so um so a lot of learning by doing but also the chance to uh if your thing is technology or if it's solar energy or whatever um, obviously the chance to link up with some amazing businesses and people in Christchurch. Um, mm. I mean, we've got the Ministry of Awesome here, for example, that does mentorship. Um, there's all sorts of things. Um, the City Council offers a huge number of trips and things. Um, obviously, we'd like to bring in the libraries here are amazing. Um, we'd like to bring in some speakers into the main library in town so that everybody can see these people, even if it's Zoom. Um, so that people whose name they've heard of in the climate change space, yep. they get a chance to listen to them and, and ask them questions. Yeah. Wow, this sounds amazing. Is there, is there anything else happening like this around the country or is this? Um, I couldn't find it when I looked for it because I thought somebody will have done this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could just copy this. Leading the way. <laughs> no, I like just copying. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. It's much easier if somebody's done it before, um, but yeah. I couldn't find it. There's yep. a couple of sort of, re they're not really similar, but there's something sort of educational on climate change in Australia um, but obviously it's not having much impact over there on the yeah yeah okay Sorry. no it's supposed to say that. <laughs> that's all right okay um oh man it, it sounds amazing I've got so many questions um so in terms of like day-to-day -day running would it, it could look like anything really so schools could be coming in as little or as often as they want with yeah. their students um and kind of using resources in many different ways and, and yeah. creating uh, but yeah yeah I mean one of the things that we because we sit right on the River Avon which is just an amazing location and right on the edge of the mm. red zone and about eight minutes from town so it's just gorgeous gorgeous location yeah uh, we have um gotten a grant which has um been another part of what i've had to do sort of become a professional beggar um yeah. for some kayaks um which will be great and one of the teachers at avonside is an excellent kayaker so we'd like to um she's we'd like to use her at least a half a day a week um, to teach kids how to kayak yeah. um, and because the river is so handy and any sort of water-based projects that they want to do because obviously the clean you know the the water ecology mm -hmm. is going to be really important yeah. um, we've found another teacher who wants to teach um, beekeeping and she's done all the beekeeping qualifications so we're just getting permission from Lynn's so that we can put beehives down there, um, hopefully next month, yep. um, and, she, and employ her a day a week as well. And then things like um, foraging, so the red zone, all the fruit trees and things have been left. So teaching the kids how to forage in what is yep. a huge chunk of, of what is effectively park mm. now in Christchurch, but a sort of quite a different um, sort of park uh, mm. is just fantastic. Um, and a whole range of things. I mean, composting is another one that we'd like to do regularly and we'd love to use the 
um, the biological husbandry unit out at Lincoln because they were just so cool. Yeah. Um, and could schools and, kind of hear about what's going on and come and be part of a certain... Yeah, um, yeah. So they can choose uh, which things they want to be part of or they could be part of that this week and part of yeah. something else next week. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'll have some chickens on site and various other things um, that the kids will get to know. <laughs> um, but it, but in terms of, uh, um, because we've got quite a lot of land, the ability to have gardens and grow things and experiment with all sorts of soil research and things is very real. Um, and I think the university will want to do some research there too. But um, but it doesn't need to be about that. I mean, if kids are into um, mm. taking action on climate change digitally or um, through um, engineering technology or through whatever, um, that's or through art or poetry, I mean, it doesn't matter. Mm. Anything is, is fine. So they can decide what they want to do. And I mean, the whole philosophy of, our Tafti has been that it's very much student-led and I think given how well we've done so far on climate change we're not in a position to dictate to anybody <laughs> what uh, what's the best way of yeah. combating it but the aim yeah. of the school or the campus will be uh, zero emission and zero waste and obviously people being aware of their own carbon footprint mm. um, if they want to get involved in political action very happy to encourage and um, help with that um, yeah if they want to do anything, basically. Awesome. And so in terms of um, the schools that are part of it, is there room for more schools to kind of yeah. jump on board? And do they have to commit much to? Being... No, they don't actually. Actually, Atafati has done all the commitment in terms of <laughs> um, the property costs and things yeah. like that. So Atafati yeah. have been amazing. And the, an you know, the, they've, they've been stunning, actually, yeah. really, really stunning. Um, and they've committed to have a director on site there. Um, it just got to the point where we were planning it and um, creating sort of meetings of all of the representatives of the boards and things where eight was enough to be starting with. Yeah. So there's nothing magic about the number eight. We've, we've already been approached by another school. Um, and um, from their point of view, school's first concern is usually how much does this cost because mm -hmm. they're usually constrained yeah. um, and when they discover that actually it's it's there to use um, they're usually very relieved so I mean they'll pay for what they use if they yeah. use things up um, but yeah. in terms of how the school operates we're hoping to get to an point with the ministry where it basically can be self-funding and the schools can use it for the kids and the teaching staff and anybody else and the universities and uh, I, there's a few rules about preschools that I need to know more about before we <laughs> say preschools as well um, yeah. can um, can be involved and also be involved across generations as well yeah. so people who are doing their masters of sustainability or whatever at say ARA who might have to do a project might want to come and do it at the um, action at climate action campus Wow, it sounds absolutely amazing. And um, hopefully, <laughs> I'm really hoping I can come and visit next time I'm in Christchurch. Well, you're very welcome. Yeah, yeah, I would you're love very to. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, come and check it out. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't have any more questions at this stage, but I would love to get back in touch um, later in the year yeah. or next year and, um, and have a chat yeah, and just sure. see how it is all going. So, um, sure. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Me and <laughs> I will stop that recording.